So welcome everybody to MS Views and News. My name is Bree Ray. I'll be the, the Pilates teacher through the class for today, the next month. Um, right now you have your towel between your legs, right between the knees, the feet right under the knees, and taking an inhale to imagine stacking the spine a little taller. Let the hands just rest onto the thighs here. And as you exhale, try to envision the belly button or the navel pulling in towards the spine, not because you're like sucking it in, but because the muscles that contract around the waistline, those are called the transverse abdominis, but the muscles that contract around are pulling in towards the spine. They're wrapping around. So that happens when you exhale. Each time you inhale, imagine you're lengthening the spine up. And each time you exhale, try to keep the length of your spine and find that strength around the spine. Now we're holding this pillow here to start to activate, you might already feel it, to activate the inner thigh muscles, the adductors of the legs. So just by holding that towel in place, as simple as that may sound, it is doing work. So if you can bring your attention or your awareness to that towel between the legs, and each time you exhale, can you give it a little squeeze? And each inhale, you release the squeeze, not enough to drop it, but just enough to feel the release then you can continue with the breath, noticing how the movement and the breath sync up together. Inhale to open, exhale to close. Inhale to lift tall, exhale to keep that length and find the strength. So now with this breath work, as I was saying before, the most important part of Pilates will always start with the breath. So this is your chance to kind of find where the center of the body is. And that may change or may feel different from person to person. So as you're continuing with that breath, exhaling to squeeze, inhaling to open, I want you to imagine your body or the five points of your hands, your head, and your feet. Thinking of that as like a starfish. So each time you inhale, try to lengthen the arms and the head and the feet down into the ground, out away from you. And as you exhale, you can let them kind of soften and pull back in towards the midline. Inhale to expand, to sort of lift yourself up like you got to be this tall to ride the roller coaster, even though you're sitting down. And exhale, soften everything back in. As you're finding this length in the body to help you lift yourself up out of, not literally out of your chair, but tall enough in and out of your chair to where you can feel the difference of yourself growing an inch, that's when you found how the breath can connect to the core. Exhale to lower back down. And if you're not feeling this or if you're not noticing this, that's fine too. You're breathing, you're moving, you're doing the mindful movement that it takes to do these exercises, to do these movements. So let's do one more to reach the arms out, to lift the spine tall. And as you exhale, feel the ribs pulling in towards each other. And let the hands just wrap onto, left, rest onto the lap. <laughs> okay, so now from here, you're going to take that uh, towel out and roll it up taco style, or I guess a very long burrito style. So take it long ways, roll it up, and let it rest onto your lap. This is very important. Part. Okay, so just let it rest onto your lap with your knees still hip distance apart, your feet right under the knees, and your hands resting on top of that long burrito. Okay, so starting with that long, tall spine, navel to the spine, and feel like something is like being picked up inside of you to help you lift yourself up with the shoulders softened down. I want you to start to look to the left just with your eyeballs. Don't turn the head, but just look with your eyeballs to where you feel a stretch in the eyeball muscle. And then start to look off to the other side. So if you were looking left before, look to the right and try to hold that gaze to the right for as long as possible. And why we're doing this is to help to not only bring attention and awareness to how the eyes sort of want to move the body. Can you feel the resistance? Go ahead, turn back center or look back center. Could you feel the resistance of your body being like, oh, but I want so bad to turn to the left. So now I want you to do that. Turn your eyeballs as far as you can to the left and then start to turn the whole head, all while keeping that long, tall spine. Like you're trying to get the chin over the left shoulder. And you're still trying to look as far as you can to the left. And now go ahead and look center. And start to turn your eyeballs first as far as you can to the right. And then notice how the body just naturally follows along with them. Okay, so where the eyes go, the body will follow. Kind of a little trick for yourself, okay? So as you look back forward, 
bring the head forward and continue play around with those movements now moving slowly at first and then maybe a little bit more um, with a little bit more more spice or more oomph in your movements and so just by tracking with the eyeballs here we're also warming up the neurological system okay the neuromuscular system there's a lot of nerves that innervate down from the skull to the neck to the shoulders to the rest of the body so just by warming up from the top down we're, we're moving we're moving and grooving here okay so then once you're even on both sides you've looked to the left you've looked to the right and look back center and now i want you to start to bring the hands across the chest and this is where the towel on your lap does matter. So out of the peripheral vision of your eyes, so from the side of your eyes, as you twist your whole body to the left, can you see or notice if the towel or if the legs start to move with you? We wanna to try to prevent that from happening. So as you look back center, keep the legs in the towel center, but then you turn the rest of your body to the right. Okay, so the goal is to move from the belly button up. As you're twisting the rib cage around, the lungs around, the shoulders around, the neck and the head around, until maybe can you look all the way back behind you? How far back can you look behind you? So say, for example, you have one mark on your wall to the right and another mark that you're like, yeah, I can see that far back on the left. Can you reach past or look past that mark each time you're twisting? Now I want you to sync it up with the breath. Inhale to yourself, center. Exhale and twist, twist, twist. Ring yourself out like a wet towel. Inhale, center. And exhale, twist and ring yourself out. Staying tall, staying long, and keeping those knees facing forward. Do one more time to the left. One more time to the right. And then we pick up that towel and take a hold of it between the hands. So reaching it out in front of you. If holding it out in front of you is a little like cranky on your shoulders or your neck, you keep it in in front of the chest like you're about to do like a bench press. Okay. So from here, I'll show you what this modification looks like as you twist to the side. Your arms are pulling against each other. And then inhale, center, exhale, twist to the other side. You're still practicing the eyeballs. Um, twisting, the whole neck and head twisting. As you twist and rotate all the way from the top of the head just to the belly button, everything else stays still. So if you want to, you raise the or reach the arms out in front of you and making sure that that towel stays right in front of the heart so that the arms don't come all the way off to the side here. They stay out in front of the heart as you twist, 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 wrap it around the whole body. All right, now take that towel behind the head and give it like a little rest. So I'm just showing you from the side what this would look like. Find the base of your skull and rest the towel up against it, okay? So from there, you can even push your head back into that towel. And from here, just by raising the arms up, what did you notice happened with the ribs? Or well, I'm just gonna bring your attention to the ribs. So if they're flaring or pulling out away, try to use the core to pull the ribs back down, navel to the spine. You're keeping that core engaged to help your spine stay nice and tall. And now exhale, twist to the left. Inhale back center and twist to the right. As you're using that deep Pilates breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, you want to use that breath as if you're trying to fog up some glasses or getting ready to clean them. And what that does is it, it, it engages the deep, deep pelvic floor muscul musculature of the powerhouse, of the core that Joseph Pilates wanted you to tap into with this specific breath. One more time to the left. And one more time to the, to the right. And then go ahead and place that towel down onto your lap again. And this time, if, you're, if your chair is a little smaller like mine is, I'm gonna scooch myself off to the, the right side of my chair so my left cheek is on. And with my right hand across the, across the chest here, I'm just gonna take a nice little side bend so that you can feel maybe a stretch happening from the hips to the ribs as you sort of soften your right hip down into that space underneath it, lifting yourself back up, stacking the spine tall. Let's do that four more times, five times total, just to where you lean to the left and feel that stretch on the right. Lifting back up, inhale, exhale, try that side bend with maybe an overarm reach. 
and then lift back up. Pull the arms down and try that two more times. Exhale, reach up overhead. The other hand is giving you maybe a little sense of support on the chair that's off to the side of you or even going down the side of the leg. And then when you lift yourself back up, scoot yourself to the other side of your chair, okay? And we do that again on the other side. Left hand across the heart. Right hand, I'm gonna place it down into the chair next to me so that as I side bend, my hip drops down into that space, that empty space underneath of me and my side bend to the right. Inhale, lift back up and exhale, sink the hip down and pull yourself to the right. Maybe if that feels good and you want a little bit more stretch, you reach that arm up overhead and feel a deeper stretch from hips to ribs to fingertips, pulling back up for two more. And exhale to the other side. Good. And then final, final one. Nice job, you guys. Good. And now bringing yourself right to the center of your chair. Okay, so, so both cheeks are resting there. Arms out to the side like you're about to make a snow angel. And as we side bend to one side, one arm goes down like you're doing a cartwheel. So if your arm can rest onto the leg of your chair, that might be helpful here. But as you lift back up, arms out to the side like a T. Then the other arm slides down the leg of the chair, reaching up overhead. Nice. And this is where visualization can help with, um, with movement, okay? So if you can see the group class, everybody's got the one arm up, one arm down, helping to see that being done can also help you to, to mimic the movement yourself. Okay, last time to the left, inhale, lift, and exhale to the right. <sighs> inhale, lift. Nice job, everybody. So now with that, that long skinny towel that you have, you're gonna place it behind the low back, okay? So if you, if you can feel like the squishy parts between um, above the hips and below the ribs, and if you're not sure where that is, it's about like this space right in here. So across the low back, that's where you want the, the towel resting. And you wanna kind of wrap it around the waist and it's okay if it doesn't like come as far forward as mine does, mine is a, long, a little bit of a longer towel. Even if it's out here to the side, what we're doing is creating a little bit of sensory feedback for yourself. So can you feel the towel against your low back? Can you try to sit your spine tall up with that towel resting against you? Not to where you're arching, but to where you're gently pressing back against it to keep yourself from arching. Now from here, I want you to push your low back into that towel and think about pulling the belly button to the spine deeper. Now as you inhale, lift the spine up. Exhale, curl and try to push your back into that towel. So what we're working on is some pelvic tucks or pelvic rolls. So if having that towel back behind you is like, I don't get it, place it back onto your lap and imagine that there's like a fish hook pulling into your belly button and scooping up towards the rib cage. Lifting yourself back up tall again, scoop and roll yourself back. So if you have a back of the chair, which mine does not, but imagine I did. If I have a back to my chair, I'm rolling back to where my back touches that chair and I'm lifting back up. If you are still using that towel, give me a couple more to where you're pushing into that towel, feeling that deep lower core engagement for two more. Using that breath to lift up and exhaling, roll back. Last one. All right, so now everybody take that towel in front of you. From here, you bend the elbows in, scraping the sides of the body, and then press out and away. It's like you're doing a bench press. Inhale to bend and exhale to press. As you're pressing, can you also think about pulling that band apart or that towel apart? So as all this is happening with the arms, as we start to warm up the shoulders, where are the shoulders? Are they up by the ears? Let's keep them down and away. That neck is nice and tall. You're trying to reach your head up towards the ceiling while keeping your ribs from flaring out or arching into the back here. So now let's start to bring some spine movement into it. As you push the arms forward, can you imagine you're pulling your low back back? Inhale, pull the hands to the heart and imagine that you're like pushing your heart into that, into that towel. Exhale, round and push. Inhale, lift and pull. And continue with that same movement, rounding like a cat, pulling. I don't know what kind of animal would pull, like a monkey, like a koala. 
Okay, so now give me three more. Exhaling, using that deep breath to find that connection to the core. Last two. And then we're going to hold that round back position. Last one. And start to lift and lower the arms up and down. If this bothers your shoulders at all, bend the elbows, but continue lifting and lowering. By lifting and lowering, what we're doing is creating a little bit of like bouncing tension in your core while you hold this deep curve. Okay, protecting the low back by keeping the core turned on for four more seconds. Three, two, and one. Stack the spine up tall, place the hands onto the lap, and cat and cow through the spine. <clears throat> nice job, you guys. Okay. All right. So now from there, I want you to come back into that C curve spine, that rounding back to where you're rounding and trying to touch the back of your chair, reaching that, the, the towel out in front of you. Now we work on a little bit of rotation. So now turn yourself towards the left. And remember what we worked on before, not moving the legs. Bring yourself back center. Inhale. Exhale. Turn your whole body. Well, actually from the belly button up to the right. Inhale, back center. So now using your breath to set the pace for yourself. If this feels like any sort of tension or pain or uncomfortableness in a bad way, in the low back or anywhere else in the body, come up to sit a little taller. Okay, you have options here. Please make sure you are listening to your body through this movement so that it's fun. We're putting the fun back in functional movement. It does not have to be a punishment. Movement should never be a punishment or painful. Okay, we got one more each way to the left for one. And one more to the right. All right, and then place those, uh, the towel back down. Hands and arms may feel a little like tingly here because the, that's like just to hold the arms out in front of you. That, that can take a lot. So give yourself some shoulder shrugs up towards the ears backwards and then down again so we do this in one direction and then switch directions rolling the shoulders forward good okay so now from there we're going to take that uh strap out in front of us and remember if your shoulders are feeling too tired you bend the elbows you bring them in closer towards the body but from here we work on a hinge back spine so with the feet planted firmly into the ground you're going to keep your spine as long as possible for as long as you can as you hinge back. And if you touch the back of your chair before, it's like, mm, that's challenging. But I want you to scoot your booty forward to the very edge of your chair until you can lean back, hinge back and make, to where you feel that like earthquakey shake like da -da 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 of your core working hard. OK, so imagine you have like suspenders in between your hips and your ribs. And as you hinge back, you feel that the suspenders don't lengthen but they also don't shorten. So we're keeping that hinge back, the spine nice and long. Now, if your arms are out in front of you, believe it or not, it's harder on the shoulders, but it can also act as a counterweight, so it'll feel easier on the core. Now, if you wanna make it harder on the core though, and still challenging for the shoulders, try lifting the arms up towards the ceiling as you hinge back and exhaling forward. So as you're inhaling, you're kind of like looking at where the towel goes, the higher it goes and then exhaling yourself back center. Let's do one more to hinge it back, keeping the feet planted firmly into the ground and then reach yourself back center. Now from that midway position, how far up can you lift the arms as you exhale? Inhale, lower all the way back down. And as you exhale and lift up overhead, maybe it's overhead to where you're like looking out over a window or maybe it's still out in front of you. Whichever position it is for you, just make sure that those shoulders stay down away from the ears, not up towards the ears, and that your ribs are not popping out. Instead, they're staying tucked in underneath of you. And that's why you want to exhale on the way up. So now when the arms do go up overhead, they stay up overhead. We work on some more rotation. As you exhale, twist towards the left. Inhale, bring it back center. Good job, you guys. Exhale, twist towards the right. And still practicing on not moving those legs. If overhead reaching is not accessible for you today, arms out in front, arms into the lap, arms across your chest, genie arms out in front of you. These are all options for you to practice with as you're looking at this recording later or as you're reviewing some exercises that, oh, I don't remember that one from the last time I saw that class, okay? 
So all of these options here, so practice rotation is targeting those obliques. We got about three more on each side. Exhaling to the left, inhale center, exhale to the right. Trying to keep your head tall, shoulders down. And we got one more to go to the left. Good job, you guys, taking those options. One more to the right. And bring those arms down, give your shoulders a little bit of a shrug. Since those arms are up overhead, I also want you to start to wiggle the fingers if you felt like any sort of tingling happen or blood loss. Not blood loss, but like sometimes with gravity, the blood can pull away from the fingers. So reaching the fingertips down towards the ground, rolling out the wrists, feeling or noticing any different sensation in the body, okay? Bending and stretching the elbows. Think of your hands as like paint brushes, just to get that full flexion and extension through the wrists, through the fingers, through the arms. Think about yourself like if you're swimming through water, you can do one arm and the other, push something away, pull it back towards you. All right, and then with the shoulders, reaching the arms up overhead or as far as you can, pulling them down and back. Two more. And then going the opposite direction, back up and forward for four, three, two. Can you focus on where your ribs are, what they're doing, making sure they're not popping out, and one. Okay. Now from there, arms out to the side, look towards the palm that is up. Let's turn the right palm up and the left palm is down. So there's neural flossing. So as we turn to look towards the right and then turn to look towards the left, turn the left palm up. So as we continue switching our gaze from left to right, we switch which palm is up from left to right. Okay, so as all of this is happening, you're maybe feeling a nice little stretch in the neck muscles, maybe in the eye muscles, maybe in the arms, across the shoulders, or even into the back. Depending on where your body carries tension, everybody may feel this differently, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's actually everything right with that. So now place the hands back onto the, onto the legs there. The towel, um, you can hold... Fold it into a, a square or just a long rectangle. So if you are on a um, kind of slidey surface or a carpet, you can place this underneath of your foot. Otherwise, leave it kind of long rolled up. So let's place it under your right foot with that right foot down onto the ground on top of that towel. For now, just sort of like sliding that leg out and away from you and then pulling back in. So me, I'm actually on a carpet, so I don't even need my towel. So here's how I'm gonna do it, is I'm just gonna slide my leg, oops, my foot, along my carpet, reach it away, and then pull it back in, okay? So you could do this on your, your, your slidey floor as well. If you have wooden floors or tiled floors and your foot is slidey, or, <laughs> slidey enough, <laughs> Um, just to make sure that your foot is not sticking. So if you have bare feet, sometimes that sticks to the ground underneath of you. If you have socks on, that can be your towel. But as we're stretching that leg out, I want you to push the heel of the foot away from you and try to pull the toes up towards you. And you may feel a little bit of a stretch in the back of the leg, either at the calf level or at the hamstring level, up where the thigh is. Each time you pull that leg in, Maybe you feel those same muscles sort of start starting to, to strengthen or tighten up or heat up, okay? Now from there, let's switch. So if that towel is under the right foot, go ahead and switch and pass it over to the left foot, all while keeping your body nice and long, stretch the left leg out, push the heel, pull the toes, and then slowly drag it back in underneath of you. So now as we start to warm up the lower body, <clears throat> all while still keeping our awareness at the core. Inhale the leg away, remember lengthening on the inhale and exhaling to pull. And of course, I'm the type of teacher who like, if it feels better to exhale the leg away and inhale it in, that's great too. As long as you're breathing, as long as you're moving, never hold the breath, always breathe into the movement, okay? So now from there, as that leg comes back in, we're gonna take that towel and place it or first roll it back up into its long burrito style. And then you're gonna place it in front of the knees. So you're holding onto the tail ends of your towel here. And you're creating like a little like barricade in front of the knees so that your hands are on the outside of the legs there. 
and your feet are planted right under the knees. So from here, as you exhale, you're gonna drive the knees out into the band, into the hands, and then bring them back either together or just to where they relax. Exhale to push the knees out and inhale to bring them back in. If your knees are doing any of this where they're sliding out of the band, one thing that you can do to mitigate that is bring the band underneath of you and continue opening and closing the legs, okay? These are plenty of options here with a beautiful prop right in your hands that everyone has access to, okay? So if we are feeling it in the side booty, okay, and the side legs, or anywhere in the lower body, then we're targeting the right areas, okay? Specifically though, right on the side glutes, um, right here where the gluteus medius muscle is, that's a very important muscle when it comes to balancing, okay? So if you were ever, um, if you're ever walking or running or even sitting and standing, this is a very important muscle for you to strengthen up, okay? To keep the hips and the low back and the upper body and lower body all in alignment. So now what we're gonna do is move a little bit into lower and upper body work. So with the towel, go ahead and take it under your right leg first. And you have the tails into both hands, okay? Both feet are back into hip distance apart, knees in front of the hips, and hand, look, feet under the knees. And with the hands, thumbs out to the side, palms up towards the ceiling. I want you to start to bicep curl or pull the leg up towards you and then lower it back down gently onto the ground. So as you exhale and pull that leg up towards you, try to make sure that your core is involved and you're not just like leaning willy-nilly back into it. Okay, I want you to stay lifted and tall and use the arms to pull up and to lower down with control. Okay, so when I say with control, anytime we talk about like movement in Pilates, we want to try to make it look and make it feel almost as effortless and effective and efficient as possible. Keeping the elbows locked in towards the side to protect the shoulders. If you're opening out to the side, that may cause injury in the future, just a little tidbit of knowledge, and then leaving that foot up into the, into the air there. So now can you stretch the leg out and bend it back in? And it's okay, the leg doesn't have to be as lifted as high as mine is. It can be just hovering off the ground as you straighten, and it doesn't even have to straighten all the way. How far out can you kick the leg and bend it in while still keeping your body tall, while still keeping it from kind of leaning off to the side, or moving with momentum. Let's try that three more times. Exhaling out, inhaling in. Two. And then after that last one, place that foot down, rest your hands. Let's go ahead and just place that towel over top of your legs and give your hands and fingertips a little roll. Holding onto that towel can be a lot. <clears throat> okay, so while we give those hands a break here, back to the lower extremities just by themselves so we can rest the hands onto the knees. And if you're looking down at my feet, we're gonna start with heel lifts. Maybe if one heel or both heels can lift up, do your good side first. If you wanna do one side at a time and then switch to your more challenged side. Okay, and you can play around with the movement here. Does it feel good to alternate it? What do you notice in the body? Okay, pay attention to which side feels a little bit more eager or lighter or willing to move compared to the other side. And there's nothing wrong with this, but these are things that I just want you to notice. Questions that you don't necessarily need to answer right now, but things that you can, you know, come back to later on. These little sprinkles of knowledge that you're coming across. They say like, oh, well, my right side didn't really work that well in the class yesterday, but it's feeling a lot stronger today. Okay, so now with both feet lowered back down onto the earth, I want you to draw attention to your toes, pulling the toes up off of the ground. Okay, because there's a muscle right in front of the shin here called your tibialis anterior that helps to pick up those toes. So think about them being on a little puppet string and that muscle in the front of the shins is shortening to pick those toes up. The reason why this is an important movement or um, strengthening exercise for these muscles is because it's, especially when you're walking, you need to be able to pick up your toes so you don't trip over them. Okay. So now again, playing around with maybe reciprocal or alternating one foot and then the other. 
<clears throat> starting to feel a little bit of that burn set into the muscles. And then give those legs a little break, maybe lifting those heels back up or rolling out into the ankles. So now this next one's gonna be a little bit like a brain teaser. I'm gonna show you from an alternated, or not alternated, but just a little bit of a side view here. I'm gonna step my right leg forward and left leg back. So my left leg or my back leg is gonna be my heel lifting leg. Okay, so imagine you've got a good beat and you're beating along with it. And your right foot or your front foot is gonna be your toe lifting heel, uh, foot. So when your heel lifts on the back leg, try to lift the toes of the front leg and let that happen simultaneously. Okay, so now you still got that good beat going. Now start to bring your awareness to the core, to your spine, to yourself sitting up tall, not leaning back against your chair, but relying on your muscles around the spine to help you stay tall, the shoulders down away from the ears. Five more seconds. Three, two, and one. Now switch and step your right foot back, left leg forward. Now your back leg is your heel lifting leg. Catch the beat to whatever song it is that you wanna to play, to whatever pace that your body is allowing you to step into. And then try to catch that beat. Oops, I lost the beat on myself. Try to catch that beat with your left toe or your front toes heel, or excuse me, toe lifting. Okay. And so now as you as you switched from, oh goodness, see, like this side is a lot harder for me to, to get into. Like I can't really, it's harder for me to talk and demo and explain while all this is happening. But you notice how once you get into a pace or rhythm, oh, I have to talk a lot slower when doing this. Take a break. <laughs> when you get into that pace or into that rhythm on your stronger side, it just like it comes naturally, it comes efficiently, it comes effectively to you. But oh, that's like a curveball that's thrown your way when it comes to the other side. So just noticing those things in the body. Alrighty. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now let's come back to our hips and our knees along with the feet moving here. So the full, complete lower body. The towel just resting across the hips still. I want you to lean back slightly, either to where you're just barely touching the back of your chair if you have one, or where you're hinged back to where you feel the core engaged, okay? So the space between hips and ribs stays the same. And then from there, can you start to lift one leg up and then alternating to lift the other leg up, okay? So it's literally just like your knee is on a puppet string being pulled to lift up off of the mat or off of the ground. So as you are marching in place, notice maybe what happens to the breath. And if it feels good to kind of sync up the pattern to your exhale. Okay. Now with that towel that's across the, the hips there, can you reach it forward with your hands and hold it out in front of you? And notice if that changed any sort of uh, sensation in the center of your body, in the core, in the powerhouse, okay? Now, each time that one knee lifts up, I want you to do a gentle turn towards that knee, towards that side, and then bring the leg back down and look center. As the right leg lifts up, you would turn to the right, and as it lowers down, you turn center. As the left leg lifts up, you look to the left. And as you continue with this marching, with this rotation, remember that you can bring the towel in closer towards the chest if this bothers the shoulders at all. Or you can keep it reaching out in front of you because this is like a choose your own adventure. This is your practice, this is your body, this is your Pilates, okay? Pilates is for everybody. To find movement and to find that awareness. Now take yourself back up into that seated tall position and cat and cow to the spine again a couple times. As you inhale, pull the chest forward. As you exhale, let yourself look down, bow down, okay? All right, you guys are doing awesome with all of this. Okay, so now with that rotation, with the same marching, so here's the demo of how it's going to look next. So as your legs are marching in place, remember you're hinged back and we're rotating, oops, rotating towards the side of the leg that's lifting. Now, as you rotate, can you think of your towel as like an oar going down into the river that you're floating down? And then as that leg comes back down onto the earth, you reach that oar up in front of you and lower it down into the water as that leg lifts back up. 
Inhale forward, exhale down and back. <sighs> Inhale forward, exhale, bring it down and back and up. Okay, so once you've got the pattern, <sighs> then you can start to play around with a, not a speedboat race or a speedboat pace, but more of like, like a rowing team pace, if you wanted to think about instead of a sailboat or a rowboat. Okay. Let's try that one more time on each side, one more time to the left and to the right. And then we're gonna take those hands back to the hips, back to the knees, to cat and cow through that spine there. All right, so now, I didn't forget about the other side. You're gonna take that towel underneath of the left leg. Hands and wrists, hopefully they're feeling a little bit more open, a little bit more warmed up, so that when you hold onto the, ta the tail ends of that towel, you're using that bicep curl, okay? So a bicep curl is where you're curling the elbows and pulling that leg up towards you, pulling the hands towards the shoulders. Exhaling to pull it back, inhaling to bring it back down. So as you are either, either seated tall, or choosing a hinge back position, make sure that the spine position you have chosen is one that stays right there, okay? So we're not leaning forward, leaning back. We are resisting the urge to lean forward or come back. Three more. And now hold that leg lifted on your last one and stretch it out and pull it back in. If the leg needs to lower down, choose a height that works best for you. But while you're holding this in position, what you're doing is called an isometric hold of those bicep muscles working for you. So by isometrically holding that leg lifted, that can be like a pretty heavy leg depending on how high you're lifting it. You're holding and still working those bicep muscles and this leg simultaneously. Two more to reach and last one reach and bend then place that leg down place that towel across the lap and cat and cow through the spine roll out the wrists the fingers or the arms or the shoulders if you need to all right and then with that long um, burrito that you have you're going to take it into your hands with the palms up like you're offering a gift up to somebody, okay? So in Pilates, it's called serve a platter. So imagine this is a platter. Your feet are planted, your spine is tall, your core is engaged, your ribs stay in towards the side. So that as you exhale, you serve the platter forward and inhale, scrape the elbows, take the platter back. Exhale, serve the platter forward. And then as your elbows scrape the side of the body, you're pulling it back in right under the chest or right at the, the sternum, the breastbone. As you're going forward and back, imagine that you're still also like trying to pull the towel apart. Okay, so now at this angle, we're working completely different like rotator cuff muscles of the shoulder. These rotator cuffs help to keep the shoulder basically like in place the arm bone is like a golf ball and your shoulder joint itself is like a golf ball tee. Those arm muscles, those rotator cuff muscles help to hold that golf ball in place. If one is not working, the other three have to compensate. Okay, now let's go for two more. And then hold those arms out. So all the way out is gonna be hardest. Halfway in, a little easier all the way in, easiest. So you choose your Goldilocks where it feels right for you so that we can rotate that platter to the left and inhale back center, rotate and look with that platter to the right, trying to keep the towel or your hands right in front of the chest. Mm -hmm. Thumbs out to the side, like you're a hitchhiker about to catch a ride. Let's do two more each way. And then last one each way. Whew. All right. So bring that towel down. Give yourself some shoulder rolls. Everybody still doing okay? Those who have their video on, give me like a thumbs up. Doing all right? Awesome. Cool. All right. So now with that towel, if you're reaching it overhead is an option for you. 
take that option. Otherwise, take the option where your hands are on top of your head, pushing the head down or across the chest, okay? So we've got some options here. All the way up overhead. From here, we're gonna take a nice side bend to the right, or excuse me, to the left. Inhale, lift back up. Doesn't matter which way you go first. We're always gonna go the opposite direction. And exhale to the other side. Feel how if the arms are up overhead, one arm gets really super heavy down to the ground while the other arm is trying to like pull it back up. Lifting up and over like there's a big beach ball off to the side of you that you don't really want to touch and trying to lift the rib cage over it and back to center. One more time to the right and back up overhead. All right, so now take those arms down. Hopefully that felt like a good little stretch of those shoulders. We're coming back to that underhand grip or as it's called a supinated grip. So imagine you've got like a bowl of soup in both of your hands. That supinated grip holding onto your long uh, towel here. So arms and legs are gonna be working together. So with your right leg, that leg is gonna start to slide out in front of you. As you pull it back underneath of you, that's your exhale. So inhale it out and away. Exhale, pull it back in. I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see that happening. Reach, inhale, exhale, pull. And now if you'd like to bring the arms to the party, you can reach them forward with that leg and then pull it back in as you exhale. So this is where we're starting to work up into more complex movements, starting to really challenge the brain, the nervous system, the muscular system, and have them all working together with the cardiovascular system, the heart, the lungs, okay? So now, here's your combo move. Reach the arms and the legs out. Take an inhale to hold. Exhale and twist to the right. Inhale, bring it back center. And exhale, bring it all back in. You inhale to repeat and do it all again. That was one rep, let's go to five. Exhale, press out, hold out, inhale. Exhale, twist out. Inhale, bring it back center. And exhale, pull it all back in. And inhale, keep the spine reaching taller, taller, taller. Exhale, press out, reach out. Inhale, hold. Exhale, twist with just the upper body. And inhale, back center. Exhale, pull the foot and the hands back in. And we got two more to press out, hold out. Inhale. Exhale, twist out. And inhale, bring it back center, pull the knee and the hands back in one more time. Press out, reach out, exhale. <sighs> inhale, center. And as you exhale, twist and wring yourself out like a wet towel and bring it back to center and bring it in. Okay, rest the arms down. This time, give yourself some neck rolls if that feels okay for you. So as you roll from one ear down to the other shoulder and back again. Notice or pay attention to which side may feel a little tighter or looser. And then as you look to the left, imagine your chin is trying to scrape down the collarbone across the chest and over to the right side. Okay, and then scrape it down the chest over to the left side. Do that one more time off to the right. And we get ready to do it again on the other side now. So you're gonna take that supinated grip with your towel. So the palms are up, thumbs are out and your spine is tall and your feet are planted. So that as your left leg slides out on your inhale and exhale to pull back in, okay? Just starting to notice like where the, the difference may be felt in the body. Okay, and now adding the arms and the legs to the movement together, this time exhaling out, inhaling in, so that we can think about stacking the spine taller keeping it tall, even as you reach the arms and the legs out. As we're looking forward, you're keeping that like, I gotta be this tall to ride the roller coaster kind of feeling within the body. So that the next time the arms and legs go out, we do that five times twisting. So where one time you twist towards the left, <sighs> inhale, bring it back center, and exhale, pull back in, inhale to prepare. Exhale, press out, hold out, inhale. Exhale, twist out. <sighs> Inhale, bring it back center, look center, and exhale, pull the foot and the leg back in. Reach back out, hold. Inhale. Exhale, twist. And bring it back center and untwist, pull back in. 
Okay, we got two more to go. Twisting to the left, feeling how all of these movements that we've kind of already done on their own can kind of meld themselves into one movement all at once. Okay, bring back center and pull back in. And that's five. Place the, the towel down, cat and cow through the spine, looking up and looking down with that inhale and that exhale. Good job, you guys. All right, so now we're going to take that band, this time behind us. So if you do have a back of your chair, I recommend maybe like turning yourself to the side so that the back of the chair would be to your side just so that it's not in your way. Here's what we're gonna be doing. With the palms away from you, fingertips down, I want you to lean yourself forward like you're about to look over a, a well. And as you push your hands back behind you, we don't want them pushing into the chair behind us. Okay, so that's why you gotta have that little bit of clearance. So when you are leaning forward, make sure the ribs aren't popping out, you're not arching through the back. Instead, you feel that straight line from hip through the heart to the head. As you're pushing those arms behind you, not so much like you're pushing. Think about more of reaching away from you. So as those arms pull and reach away from you, as you're leaning forward, you feel that nice opening in front of the chest and that nice strength happening in the back of the arms. Good. Okay, now from there, can you leave those arms lifted? It's gonna be a micro bend, just a tiny bend of the elbows and then stretch the arms out again. Bending and pressing, so you feel now the backs of the arms lighting up. Those are your triceps. Imagine that you're trying to push something away from you and pull it back in just a little bit. Get in that tricep, bend and press for four, three, two more, and one. Whew, then sit up nice and tall. Take that band back out, or that band, that towel right back out in front of you. And with the arms, reach them across the chest and give yourself a big hug. I've got my right arm on top of the left. And you can stay right here, or we can come with the palms together in front of the face. These are called eagle arms. If you can't grab a hold of the palms, sorry, if you can't grab a hold of the palms, so if you're here, this is option one. Option two is grab onto your thumb with your other thumb, okay? Or palm onto palm. Then open and slice the arms out to the side like a T, left arm on top. Give yourself that big hug. And you either stay here or thumb to thumb or finger to thumb or palm to palm. So pushing those palms in towards each other. Nice, there you go, good job you guys. Slice the arms out to the side like you're going in for a big hug and then let the hands rest down by the side. All right, so we'll finish with a little bit more of an ab series, basically like a full body sequence. Um, if your shoulders start to get a little tired, drop the towel, place the hands across the chest. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like from the side. We're working in either a round back position, just to review, that's where your belly button is pulling in towards the navel and you're rounding the low back while still trying to stay tall through the upper back or in that hinge back from hips through the heart to the head is one long line as you hinge back. So if you have a back to your chair, like I don't, imagine that you're just barely touching it, okay? So now with that uh, towel out in front of you, that's where it stays. If that holding out in front of you starts to get too heavy, you pull it in, bending the elbows, or pull it in even closer, bring it right in front of the chest, okay? So now from there, whichever core movement you wanna choose, you either round back, on your exhale and inhale lift. Exhale to round it back and inhale lift. Keeping the feet flat and planted onto the mat, making sure they don't like lift up or, or get, get, um, get lighter. They'll feel like they wanna lift up, but that we're not there yet. We got three more. I'm working in a round back position, keeping the shoulders down away from the ears. The gaze is forward right above that towel if it's at shoulder or eye level. For two more, rounding back, we're gonna hold that round back position. And then the last one, you hold it back there right to that like shaky quakey, right where your deep core is starting to pull up and in. Now pull the right knee up underneath of that towel and then the left knee up underneath of that towel. So we're coming back to our marching. One foot lifted and then the other. <sighs> Inhale, lower, exhale, lift. <sighs> Remember, it's like you're trying to fog up some glasses, get into those deep powerhouse muscles. 
Okay, now keeping either that hinge or round back doing whichever feels best for your body. Now we're gonna twist ourselves towards that leg that's coming up. So we've, didn't, we've done this before, but remember we were seated tall, okay? As we are curling or hinging, we're keeping that same line of engagement for the core to work nice and strong here. Even if your back is resting, just lightly onto the back of your chair, you're still gonna be working those obliques, those arms and those legs. Now, can you hold your twist off to the left side and just lower and lift that left leg? So as that leg is lifting and lowering, you're holding that twist. As you're holding that twist, can you try to like twist a little deeper? Not letting the arms go off to the side, but letting the body twist a little further to the side. Last three leg lifts, two, now hold that left leg down, you hold your twist and bring the arms up and down, up and down. For four, six total, last two, and one. Bring yourself all the way to sit back up nice and tall. Roll out the shoulders, roll, roll out the wrists, even rolling out the spine. Okay, so that when you are ready for that left, or excuse me, the right side, that strap or the towel is in your hand. Okay, you found that round, or if you did your hinge back position to where you start to rotate towards the right and bring it back center. Rotate to the right and just bring it back center, kind of warming up, revving up those right oblique engine muscles. And now getting ready to rotate to the right and lift the right leg. Inhale, back center. Exhale, rotate to the right, lift the right leg and back center. Let's try for three more. Holding that twist into and final one, hold that twist and continue lifting and lowering that leg. Making sure those shoulders are down, the neck is tall, the head is lifted, the core is engaged. Good, now hold that foot down and start to lift the arms up and down for six total, five. Ribs stay wrapped, four, three, two. Good job, everyone. I can see two and one. Bring it back up and center. Place the hands down. Cat and cow through the spine. Roll out the hands, the wrists, the fingers, the shoulders, the neck, whatever the body needs for you here. Yeah, like a piece of seaweed kind of. <laughs> All right. So from there, we're going to take our hands across the chest. Okay. And with your side leans, I want you to start to get maybe a little comfortable with sliding the leg. So right now, this is my right leg as I lean to the left, sliding the opposite leg away from you. And then as you come back up center, bring that leg underneath of you, okay? So sliding the other leg away. So now if you are, if you do need the towel under the foot, this is where you place that towel under the foot. If leaning to the side maybe feels a little precarious, I'm just gonna place my towel off to the side, then I want your hands to come down onto your seat so you can feel comfortable leaning off to the side here. Okay. So you might feel maybe a little bit of a stretch in the front or in the side of the hip, maybe along or up the side of your body. Everybody's body is different, so I just wanna like call out these, these, these sensations if you do feel it. Now try reaching the arm up overhead and making that nice long side angle stretch. So from heel of the left foot up and overhead to the fingertips of the left hand. And continue side reaching, one arm overhead as the leg reaches away from you. Let's try that one more time on each way or on each side. Awesome, and then bring yourself back up, okay? So now from here, I'm gonna to turn to my side so that you can see what's happening. So I just now have my right leg on my chair. So if you do have a back to your chair, if you do have arms on your chair, this might be a little difficult to do, um, but kind of work your way through it. It's a nice stretch through the front of the hip. So if you can bring your left knee down as close to the ground or even resting onto the ground if you'd like it to, you'll start to feel a nice lovely stretch there through the front of the leg through the front of the hip. So now my right hand, which is on the chair next to me, is there for like a sense of support or even onto the back of my chair with my arm to kind of hold me over, okay? So think about the left knee being nice and heavy, maybe even the left arm reaching up overhead, 
for a full side body stretch. And if you'd like to take it one step further, push your left foot behind you. Think about straightening the leg back behind you and opening up that front of the hip, the front of the, the core on the left side of the body and reaching up overhead. Oh, that's always a good one. Okay, now bring yourself back to look center. Slide yourself off to the other side of your chair or turn yourself to the other side of the chair. So now just your left leg is supported. Your left hand is on the side of the chair and your right leg has stepped underneath of you with that knee sinking down. Did I say left leg? I meant right leg. Right leg is sinking down underneath of you. Left hand is onto that chair and reaching up overhead with the right hand. Okay, so that feels good. You stay right here. If you want something maybe a little better, depending on your body, you stretch the right leg away from you as your right leg reaches over top to the left side of the body. Try to take one more inhale in and one more exhale out, bringing yourself back to center. Start to open and close the legs like a butterfly flapping his wings, okay? With a nice little cool down, feeling the heart rate maybe come back down, maybe noticing any different sensations in the body. Where did you notice more of the work being done from right side to left side? Maybe was it more of your right quad or your left hamstring, okay? Now starting to move the knees side to side with each other and letting the body wave in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And then letting yourself bring stillness back into the body, placing the feet right under the knees, the knees right in front of the hips, softening the eyes closed, and feeling the shoulders soften away from the ears, feeling how the elbows feel heavy, but the spine feels light and tall, where it can lift away from your chair or your seat where you feel the sits bones still sitting on the chair, but that's the only piece that you feel really connected down. Everything else is trying to pull its way up. Navel to the spine. Feeling that sort of fish hook feeling pull up inside of you, that connecting piece from the lower body to the upper body. Staying strong to keep that core and the spine nice and long, okay? making your awareness and your attention, drawing it up to the chest where you feel yourself breathing in and out. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And maybe noticing that when you do breathe in through the nose, does the spine get a little taller? As you exhale out through the mouth, do your shoulders get a little softer? As you bring your awareness to your face, try to soften the eyebrows. Just barely opening the mouth so that you can breathe out from the back of the throat, that nice breath. Feeling that the space around your mouth is also just as relaxed as the rest of your body. Relaxed, but at the same time, there's energy helping you to keep you sitting tall, okay? So now as you open your eyes to the world or to the room back around you, I want you to open your eyes and maybe see it in a different light or see it from a new perspective of these new sensations that you may be feeling through the body, where the feet are planted onto the ground, how the knees uh, react or move with each other. All of these things you can notice, <clears throat> excuse me, because of Pilates, because of that mindful awareness and that mindful movement that we just did for the last hour together. Um, so I want you guys to give yourself a round of applause. Thanks for coming to class. Thanks for signing up. And um, as I said at the beginning, this recording um, will be able for you to review it, to practice um, at any time until we meet again for next, uh, next month's Movement Mondays. Um, so if you have any questions, anyone can stay after. Um, we can chat or put anything on the chat box there. Um, and I look forward to maybe seeing you guys again later um, for next month or maybe later in life. I'll see all of y'all again a different time. Thank you. When's the next class? Um, I was just thinking that. I know it's in September, um, but the date, let me just pull it up real quick. Okay.
Um, and of course, if anybody does know those dates, shout them out. Mm -hmm. uh, the 21st, oh wait, no, that's yoga. Sorry, 9-7 is going to be the Pilates. So that's actually a Tuesday. Um, so take note of that. It will be on a Tuesday, I think, because that Monday is Labor Day um, or some holiday in September. Um, <laughs> so if you want to mark your calendars, that's going to be a Tuesday for our Movement Mondays with Pilates. And then yoga in September is going to be on 9-21, so September 21st. Um, all right. And so okay, this is I'll just see you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.